the FAST exam. FAST exam stands for Focus Assessment with Sonography for Trauma. The relevance of this exam for the perioperative setting has been questioned, uh, but I'd like to illustrate potentially why it could be useful uh, in this uh, module. Over time, the FAST exam is actually shown to be the most widely used point of care ultrasound exam here in the United States, um, but predominantly has been used in the emergency room for the assessment of uh, the acute trauma patient. However, the relevance for the perioperative setting uh, can be evaluated uh, when we look at the fact that our patients who are post-surgical may often have issues that are very similar to that acute trauma patient. And having the appreciation for the FAST exam in our armor and terrarium to be able to evaluate uh, for the rapid collection of uh, free fluid, which is essentially what the FAST exam is, uh, can be very useful. So again, we talked about the fact that the FAST exam stands for uh, right there. Uh, it is a focus exam designed to evaluate for thoracal abdominal hemorrhage in a trauma setting. However, again, uh, the post-surgical setting can be similar if we're looking for a rapid uh, situation of rapid free fluid uh, loss or rapid free fluid uh, hemorrhage um, in the uh, thoracal abdominal area. Ideally, this fast exam, uh, the FAST exam should be performed under, in under three minutes. Uh, it involves four um, primary views and four acoustic windows, the right upper quadrant abdominal view, the left upper quadrant abdominal view, the subxiphoid abdominal view, and the suprapubic abdominal view. Fundamental to this concept of the FAST exam is just a basic review of, of anatomy. So the peritoneum, uh, as we all know, is a serous membrane that forms the lining of the abdominal cavity um, and overlies most of the intra-abdominal organs. It's because of this peritoneal layer um, and the separation it has um, between the retroperitoneal and the intraperitoneal structures uh, that allow us to formula, uh, that allow our, the, our human bodies to have uh, what is called pericolic gutters or areas or pathways in which free fluid will collect in, uh, in certain dependent areas. And the fundamental thing to take from all of this is that because of these pericolic gutters, shown in this cartoon here, when you have an injury above the umbilicus, if it is significant, meaning greater than 200 mLs, you will have free fluid collection uh, at the right upper quadrant. And that makes the right upper quadrant a, a very important um, view uh, when it comes to the FAST exam uh, because it is the dependent area where because of these pericardial gutters, if your uh, free fluid or abdominal injury uh, is above the umbilicus, it will collect in this space. Similarly, the most dependent area for injuries below the umbilicus is what's called the pouch of Douglas, uh, which is essentially a free fluid collection that occurs below um, uh, the bladder. And so fundamentally, it realized that the right upper quadrant and the superpubic views are the two out of the four views that are key uh, uh, because one of those will be positive when you have a large amount of free fluid collection um, that you're concerned about. The goal of the FAST exam has been identified to target greater than 200 mLs of free fluid. Remember to uh, uh, review the fact that uh, ultrasound sonography of uh, free fluid um, uh, is essentially causing is essentially um, hypoechoic or black when it's free uh, and forming rapidly or very acute. However, as it starts to form clot, um, that uh, usually allows it to become more echogenetic. But very important, it's uh, a variation in the gray, um, and that variation in gray points out to the fact that uh, it still may be. Uh, free fluid versus organ systems. Important to also realize that free fluid compared to contained fluid uh, has a pointy appearance. Uh, it should not be circular or feel contained in a wall structure and when you manipulate it it should rapidly change shape. shape. Uh, and those are all key things that help identify free fluid versus um, cystic structures or structures within organ systems. 
For the scanning technique, remember that um, we are scanning the abdomen, uh, the abdomen for uh, organ systems that are fairly deep. So either the abdominal low frequency probe or the cardiac low frequency probe can be used. So the overview, we'll talk first about uh, the right upper quadrant view. We're going to have our indicator aiming at the 12 o'clock position, uh, following the last two rib and placing the probe just uh, at the mid axillary line uh, at the, following that last true rib. What we're looking for is the liver and kidney interface. So again, the indicator here aiming at 12 o'clock, following the last true rib down to the mid axillary line, looking for the liver kidney interface. Because again, that would help identify Morrison's pouch, uh, which is that free fluid collection area for any injury um, of significance um, for above the umbilicus. So the picture here, here we can see uh, the liver and the kidney. Uh, it's a normal uh, fast exam versus here now you see this hypochoic separation uh, between the liver and kidney, which indicates a positive fast exam. Cartoon shown here. So I'll demonstrate all the views uh, at once. Now we'll go into the second uh, fast exam view, which is the sub xiphoid view. Uh, the sub xiphoid view when it comes to the FAST exam, is essentially looking for the presence of pericardial fluid uh, and uh, evaluating for pericardial tamponade. So in that view, um, well, how you're intonating the heart is with the indicator at the 3 o'clock position, you want to place the probe in the sub xiphoid space, just as we talked about before, ideally having the knees bent to decrease the tension is going to be key. And using the liver as the acoustic window to shine into the heart to evaluate the pericardium is also going to be key as well. Indicator here again shown at the 3 o'clock position. What we're looking at for this view is evaluating the lower pressure side of the heart or the right ventricle and right atrium for the presence of pericardial fluid. You can view this as a 90 degree rotation from the IVC view. So in the IVC view we have the indicator aiming at the 12 o'clock position. We're now turning that to the 3 o'clock position to get uh, a view of the pericardium uh, around the right ventricle and right atrium, as well as uh, evaluating uh, the pericardium on the left ventricle side. But again, free fluid initially collect on the lower pressure right side of the structures first. This is somebody who's uh, uh, in tamponade currently. <clears throat> this table represents the measurements that you can uh, assess of the pericardial fusion to determine uh, volumes. Okay, so now we'll go into the third of the FAST exams, which is the left upper quadrant view. Now this view is technically more challenging, and again, remember when we're talking about hemodynamically significant 3, 4, 500 mLs of rapid uh, producing free fluid, uh, a positive injury, even if the injury is uh, here on the patient's left side, will uh, occur on the right upper quadrant as well. But nonetheless, to do the left upper quadrant view, you now want the indicator uh, roughly uh, same process of following the last two rib, but now instead of being the mid-axillary line, you're going to be in the posterior axillary line. Usually, you're uh, one rib space higher uh, on the patient's left side of the left upper quadrant view than you are on the right. Again, indicator still at the 12 o'clock position, and you're looking for, very important, uh, to, to evaluate the, uh, the spleen uh, and diaphragm interface. Very important to realize that free fluid will occur at the spleen diaphragm interface first uh, before it interacts with the spleen kidney interface. So here you have uh, a view of the, again, the probe here, indicator at the 12 o'clock position, posterior axillary line. Uh, we're identifying the spleen, uh, and then there you see the kidney, there's the pleura, and you're evaluating for free fluid. And again, free fluid will initially uh, encapsulate the spleen uh, and before it separates between the spleen and the kidney. So free fluid uh, initially uh, collects on the upper dome um, or the um, uh, you know, cephalad uh, portion of the spleen uh, before uh, it separates between the spleen and the kidney. This cartoon again showing the fact that the diaphragm and spleen interface is where free fluid collects initially. Okay, so the last view um, that we'll talk about with the FAST exam is the uh, 
evaluation of the suprapubic uh, view to evaluate specifically the pouch of Douglas. So in this view, what you want to have is the indicator at the 3 o'clock position. You want to place the probe 2 centimeters superior to the pubic symphysis along the midline of the abdomen. And very important um, that uh, in situations where this may be awkward, placing the probe slightly higher, but just decreasing the angle to allow you to insinate down uh, into the bladder is a, a proven technique to uh, use this view um, in all patients. The uh, two centimeter superior to the pubic symphysis, however, though, is the traditional placement of the probe. You can also get a longitudinal view uh, when it comes to evaluating for the bladder uh, to get an idea of uh, bladder volume. But nonetheless, the traditional view is having the indicator at the uh, 3 o'clock position uh, were transverse with the uh, pubic symphysis. First sign of blood uh, when it comes to this is actually you'll see uh, blood accumulate on either side of the bladder, below the bladder, uh, and then ultimately if the volume gets to be large enough, they'll connect. And so that's called the bow tie sign. But initially free fluid will collect on the either aspect of the uh, out outer borders of the bladder, um, just below the bladder, uh, and then connect. This is just a view of showing the two different techniques. Um, the, again, the long axis view is to help evaluate for uh, bladder volume. So here's somebody who has a normal uh, bladder, and now we see uh, free fluid containing. And you can see the pointy nature. Um, if you pushed and manipulated this structure, you'd see free fluid contained in the bladder, and then you'd see this uh, chain shape very awkwardly, um, just indicating that it's uh, free fluid. There are also calculations that you can get from that uh, longitude, that transverse shown here, and the longitudinal views. Sorry. And this is the calculation shown here. 0.7 times these measurements can give you an estimation of bladder volume as well. Okay, so let's now uh, demonstrate all four of these views. So the first view again uh, that I'll uh, try to identify is the right upper quadrant view. We want the indicator at the 12 o'clock position, showing again our indicator with the ultrasound plane like this. We're going to place, follow the last true rib down to the mid axillary line, and what we're looking for, right upper quadrant again. So now that we have it loaded up, I'm going to follow that last true rib to the mid axillary line, and what I'm trying to identify is this space here of the liver and the kidney. So here we see the kidney liver. Now we see the kidney, and we're looking at this interface here to see if there's any uh, hypochoic space between the liver and the kidney to evaluate for free fluid. So our indicator again shown here will be at the 12 o'clock position on the patients. Now, for the sub foot view, we're going to have our indicator aiming at the 3 o'clock position. Very important to realize for the sub foot view, uh, we change the way we hold the probe. So traditionally, uh, I often will, we talk about holding ultrasound probe like a pencil and having your uh, hand rest on the patient's body so that you can make those fine motions. The reason why we can't do that for the sub xiphoid view is because of the fact that now we're limited with how low we can have the angle with the skin. And since the sub xiphoid view is a view that we're trying to go from the sub xiphoid space to get a shallow enough angle to get it, an insulation of the heart, we have to be very shallow with the skin. So now take your ultrasound uh, probe and plate your hand on top of the ultrasound probe such that you're able to really lower the angle. So first step when it comes to the sub life review, uh, have the indicator at the three o'clock position shown here. We're gonna lower our angle after we identify the liver. So first step is I put the liver in the middle of my screen because the liver will be an excellent acoustic window into the heart. Now as we lower our, our angle with the probe so that we're getting the heart achieved in our ultrasound image by lowering our angle. So here we are, have the liver in the middle of our screen. Lowering our angle will allow us to visualize the heart. And we're focused on the right side of structure. So here we have right atrium and right ventricle and we're simply looking to see if we see any uh, hypochoic space or free fluid collection outside of the cardiac chambers. So again, that's the sub xiphoid view. Now moving on to the left upper quadrant view, indicator still aiming at the 12 o'clock position. You usually are slightly higher uh, in rib space wise uh, than you were on the right upper quadrant. And what we're looking for now in this view is in fact, 
try to do this so that we can see the screen, is actually looking to see if we have any free fluid collection above the spleen. So here we have spleen diaphragm interface, and there's the kidney, but we're looking for free fluid collection to initially encapsulate the upper aspect of the, of the spleen towards the head at the spleen diaphragm interface, and then it will encapsulate the spleen uh, and then ultimately separate the spleen and kidney interface. But it first collects on above the spleen, uh, shown there, hopefully. You can uh, visualize that free fluid collect initially above the spleen. Now we'll go into the suprapubic view. Suprapubic view, again, two centimeters above the pubic symphysis, simply looking with our indicator uh, aiming down for the bladder. So now we're going to show this picture here. The bladder is in the middle of the screen, and we're simply just looking to see free fluid collect on either aspect of the bladder. Uh, and so behind the bladder, uh, you will look to see for hypoechoic spaces uh, that will ultimately merge below the bladder. And by applying pressure on the bladder, you can ensure and validate the fact that this free fluid collection is not actually within the bladder itself, but outside the bladder. Very useful technique to evaluate for um, a uh, patient who has uh, pelvic injury as I said before. All right, and that's the FAST example.